Hello, my name's Tony Wiley. I'm the Australian Head of Corporate Solutions for Jones Lang LaSalle. Welcome to the results of our Global Corporate Real Estate Survey, where we had 500 responses from corporations all around the world. We had a good response from Australian respondents, where 61 people responded. We want to share with you today the results of, those, of that survey. We identified a lot of information from the survey and we consolidated that down into four key trends. But before we look at each of those trends, let's have a quick look at the short-term reactions that a number of responses considered and undertook during the GFC. I think we'd all agree that the Australian market was less impacted by the GFC than our global counterparts. Just to highlight some of this from the results, during the GFC, only 51% of Australians took cost out of their portfolio compared to an overall average from respondents of 69%. Only 41% of Australian respondents consolidated into fewer buildings compared to global or compared to the overall average of 70%. And only 25% of Australian respondents disposed of surplus space, returning it to the landlord or, or other parties compared to 50% overall. These results suggest that the Australian corporate real estate executives were running portfolios leaner and more efficiently than most of their global counterparts. First key trend identified greater scrutiny on CRE. Coming out of the respondents was 87% indicating that CRE is now in an elevated position and more visible by the senior executives of their organisations. This has come about as a result of the need to achieve cost savings during the GFC. The executives wanted quick savings, they asked for the CREs to go and find those savings and for the first time ever I believe the executives looked behind the detail of corporate real estate and wanted to know where and how these savings could be achieved. This resulted in a deficiency in uh, a lot of organisations where a lot of real-time data was not available. Uh, at the hands of the CRE who scrambled to gather data to be able to make informed decisions where some of these cost savings could occur. Not only was there a lack of data for a lot of organisations in respect to their portfolio but also market data. The other aspect that was deficient was the need and, and having an integrated solution with this scrutiny and looking at the activities with the other key business functions of HR, IT and finance. And now the C-suite is demanding that when we look at the real estate solutions that these are incorporated in any business case moving forward. So now we're moving from a situation where it's cost savings that were made during the GFC to, a, to now where we're looking at cost avoidance because cost savings can only continue to be driven down so far. Key trend number two is meeting the growth versus right sizing challenge. As we improve and come out of the GFC, a lot of economies around the world are showing signs of improvement and therefore organisations looking to growth. And the CREs are expecting to switch gears from where they were downsizing during the GFC now to look to have growth and add more people back to their organisation. We're in an environment here where it's now more doing more with less or more with the same. It's not simply adding more space as we add more people. The global financial crisis has really been a stimulus to allow people to seriously look at alternate workplace strategies. Apart from the IT sector who has previously looked at alternate workplace strategies, organisations now are looking at more mobility, alternate workplace strategies, looking at offshoring, looking at hub and spoke, looking at alternatives so that they don't just simply add more space as they add people, which contributes to the cost. Key trend three is about balancing long-term strategic planning with short-term flexibility. 69% of Australian respondents indicated that they do three-year-plus strategic plans, but very few do short-term, 12-month tactical plans. The GFC exposed a deficiency in short-term planning where a lot of organisations were unprepared to implement short-term strategies to achieve the cost savings. Flexibility is key here and the initiatives such as innovative lease structures with lease buyouts or options, preparing short-term stacking plans as, as contingencies and even going as far as getting preliminary approvals are all part of this flexibility. And whilst flexibility might cost more initially, in the long term it will achieve greater savings.
the final trend is progressing towards more of a partnership model. 25% of respondents now have an exclusive partner and that is forecast in three years time to grow to 67%. So why are the Australian respondents indicating they're looking more for this partnership model? The reason we're seeing this trend towards more of a partnering arrangement is because the corporations do not want to make investments in non-core business. That's being left to the service providers who are continuing to invest in systems and process so that they can bring best practice and innovation to their clients. Combine this with the scrutiny that the CREs are now under. The CREs need to spend more time engaging the stakeholders and managing the stakeholders' expectation, which means that they don't have as much time to spend on operational activities. This should be left to the service providers. CREs currently spend about 70% of their time on operational activities, which only adds 25% of value to their organisation. The previous thinking was to turn this on its head and have 70% of the time spent on strategy and relationship management, which added 50% of value to the organisation. The main problem with achieving this was that no additional resource was given to the CRE, and so whilst all the good intention was there, it was hard to achieve. The new thinking is for the organisation to leave the operational activities to the service provider or partner so that they can spend more time on the relationship management with the key stakeholders and both coming together to work on the portfolio strategy and planning. Thanks to those who participated in the survey and for all your valuable insights. A copy of the survey results can be found on our website. Thank you.